I'm going to try something a bit different today. I wanted to do a like a gameplay video for a long time, but I've always been worried that my computer, which is a laptop and really old, wouldn't be able to handle it, um, the gaming and the screen recording, uh, which is still sort of the case. I still have this really old laptop, but I figure I'll try and do a short video. Um, either that or I'll go until my computer catches fire, whichever comes first. So this is a game called um, Universe Sandbox and it's kind of right up my alley. I haven't played it um, extensively before, I've just had a little look at it, so um, I'm probably four years late to the party on this game, um, but it still seems really cool. So here we've got a solar system in real time, so the simulation is going um, one simulated second for every real second that passes, so nothing really looks like it's moving too much. You can see we've got the planets. Um, Jupiter looks like a bit of a smudge. Let's see if we can go over there. Oh yes, so that's all of Jupiter's moons. Um, I guess that's why it looks so crazy. Um, let's see if we can get Jupiter itself. so many moons I can't get it there we go okay um, so I'm not, sh not sure how the physics are gonna be in this game I've heard they're a little bit dodgy um, I've seen already that they are slightly dodgy with a few things I know they don't um, do relativity so all the physics are sort of um, Newtonian but maybe they do an okay job of gravity let's see what we can do Okay, so one thing I want to try is I know you can send a light pulse, um, which means you're sending out a sphere of, I guess, photon, um, representing the light that's coming off an object and seeing if that light um, travels, how far it's traveling and sort of what um, space it's taking up. So we'll set a sphere of particles, okay, let's first set this back to one real second. Set a sphere of particles, there they are, radiating out from the sun. So these are all our photons here um, and they're coming for us. So you might have heard it takes light about eight minutes to get from the sun uh, to earth and that's because um, the light's traveling at a certain speed although they're traveling at the speed of light which is extremely fast um, it's still finite so it takes a finite amount of time for the light to reach us um, I guess if I run this simulation for eight or so minutes um, we'll see the time that it takes uh, looks like it's already about to get to Mercury I find this concept pretty interesting because it's like I don't know, it kind of represents the sphere of things that we know, at least about the sun, and anything sort of um, inside of that sphere, I guess, we, we don't know about. It's the idea that the sun might have disappeared already and, and we wouldn't even see it disappear from our sky for the full eight minutes. It's like this is the knowledge and everything else is just dark to us see if we can speed this up so it looks like the lights about to reach us over here now let's see if I can um, pause it when it gets to us okay so let's let's have a look at her So I guess it's, it's hard to see, there is the sphere of particles. Um, this whole thing sort of reminds me of, I don't know if any of you guys have done like or studied astrophysics, um, but one of the common questions they ask you to do in sort of exams and stuff is work out 
um, questions regarding the intensity of light coming from the sun and they might say something like the sun emits a certain power and um, what intensity of light is is hitting the earth's surface given that power is being emitted and the way you do it is you take that power and um, you work out how much intensity per um, square meter is on the surface of this sphere of light emanating from the sun and then you knowing the sort of um, surface area of earth can work out the intensity that reaches earth it's sort of um, I don't know it's a question you do a lot in class and this is a cool representation of it all right wonder um, the other cool thing when you think about it, it takes us eight minutes to notice that the Sun is missing in the sky is that it would also take us a while to um, sort of gravitationally notice so let's see if we can delete this Sun can we get rid of the light pulse I don't know what I deleted let's make a new one all right, we've got this pulse of light coming out from the sun, and after that was emitted, we took that sun and deleted it. Um, so it, it's light still going to travel to us, even though that sun is no longer there. Um, it should also start to affect the orbits of some of these planets, as the main mass they're orbiting around is no longer there. I wonder if we'll be able to notice that. Um, perhaps let's speed things up. Okay, so many years have passed um, and I guess everyone looks a little lost here because the sun is gone. They haven't moved very much. Um, also interestingly, let's take a look at the earth, it's still lit on one side, how curious. Um, I don't guess the lighting's not as realistic, but yeah, that light source is no longer there. Um, so that's the solar system without the sun. Let's take a look at something else. Okay, I've wiped everything and now we've got a nice blank slate here to work with, uh, with this uh, nice set of stars in the background. So I want to see if we can make a pulsar. A pulsar is sort of a highly magnetized rotating neutron star, or I think it can be a white dwarf as well. So let's get such a star. Um, this is a Sirius B, this is a white dwarf. Let's chuck that out there. Okay, nice. So I wanna look at its properties. So I'd like to make this white dwarf quite highly magnetized. Um, magnetic field, Gauss. Uh, let's go with 10 to the power of 12. Okay, that should be quite a lot. Um, let's give ourselves a pole angle. Um, and then let's just give ourselves some rotation, see what happens. Rotation speed. I guess, uh, let's go with speed. Mm. Actually no, rotational period, that sounds alright. Um, 0.2 seconds. Okay, it's going somewhere. Uh, let's zoom out. That's pretty cool. That's cool. Um, that's kind of what the artist's impression of pulsars look like. Um, so a pulsar basically is kind of like a lighthouse in astronomy. You get signals from these um, sort of jets that are um, putting out electromagnetic radiation and you get the signals from them on quite a um, reliable period because they're rotating like this. There was a bit of, I guess, controversy surrounding um, 
the discovery of pulsars in that they were first noticed by a PhD student, Jocelyn Bell Burnell. Um, she was the first one to notice them and pick up their strange sort of signals. And the discovery of pulsars went on to be enough to win a Nobel Prize. However, the Nobel Prize went to Jocelyn's supervisor and not to her. And I think there was a bit of sort of outcry about that, that it wasn't fair that she should miss out. But it was justified, I guess, by that her supervisor, as the head of the research group, was able to take um, responsibility for both the good discoveries and anything they did wrong, um, which I don't think is particularly fair, um, but it's just what happened in this case. I was lucky enough to actually meet Jocelyn um, when she visited my old uni to do a series of talks about astronomy and about her life in physics. Um, and she's really interesting, a really good speaker and a really smart woman. Um, so I think it's a shame she missed out on the Nobel Prize, um, but she's gone on to have a really good career in physics. Let's have a look at another one of the simulations I've got um, sort of pre-made in here. Core. Galaxy collisions, I think that would be interesting. About 4 billion years from now, our Milky Way galaxy will collide with a nearby Andromeda galaxy. This collision, the result of the mutual gravitational attraction between the stars, planets and other matter that make up both galaxies, will produce a single merged galaxy. It is unlikely that any stars in the galaxies will actually collide, although some stars will likely be ejected from the combined galaxy during the merge. Well, let's have a look at that. Okay, the scale is pretty high. We've got like 70,000 years per second. Um, so this is the Milky Way and up the top we've got Andromeda and um, so yeah they're just spiraling towards each other and this is eventually going to happen to us. Um, let's just put on pause. So we're in one of the spiral arms of the Milky Way. That's our home and and I guess there we are with millions of other stars. I think what that little description said was the fact that um, even though it's such a dense clump of stars and there are so many, the distance between stars and between planets is so vast that even in this sort of crossover region where the galaxies are um, like merging together, it looks less like a blur now, but um, individual stars aren't banging into each other. They're just passing through each other. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can zoom back out. Continue to play this. I think one of the coolest things about, I guess when this happens, not that I'd be around to see it, but is that our night sky would change. You would look up in the, um, at the stars at night and not just see the stars in our galaxy, but also see all of these other stars as the galaxies collide. And I think that would be an amazing sight. This night sky would probably be pretty bright, actually, to have all these stars so close. I think you can actually see the Andromeda galaxy in the night sky, um, maybe with the naked eye now. It's just sort of a very small, fuzz of light and you'd probably need to know where to look for it but um, you, know, you can you can see Andromeda you can also see at least in the southern hemisphere um, definitely with the naked eye they're quite obvious is the Magellanic Clouds which are two little dwarf galaxies and I think that's pretty cool that not only at night do we see the stars in our neighborhood but we can actually see into other neighborhoods at the moment Okay, so this is our swirling mess. I wonder if it will settle down to become like sort of a regular shaped spiral galaxy or what its final shape is going to be. It's been um, a casual 107 million years, million I guess, so far. Actually, it seems pretty fast. Um, 
don't know how much longer it would take to kind of reach a bit of an equilibrium. we could. I know the description said um, some stars would also be ejected from just like all the crazy gravity that's um, pulling things this way and that in this um, merger and I guess some of these little clumps, maybe those ones out there, look like they may be getting ejected. Um, it's kind of hard to resolve only a few stars on here. Oh, such a mess. Um, so this is Andromeda has got a black hole at the center. Um, I guess we can uh, remove it. Oh, that seems to have had an effect. Yes, uh, almost like an anti-gravity effect. Things are now uh, without that black hole in the center of Andromeda. Uh, there's nothing to, to attract things back into the middle and we've just had a splat on our galaxy mixtures. Okay, well that's pretty cool. Um, wow. Okay, can we get rid of Andromeda now? Yes, and this is what is left of the Milky Way um, after not only our collision but the removal of that black hole. Um, we've kind of gotten hundreds of little clusters. I wonder what will happen to them if they'll find something new to attract to. I mean I've only just scratched the surface of things you can do on this game. I know there's so much more I can do. I can like throw objects at other objects. Um, I don't know if we, can, I don't know if we can throw a sun in. Oh, there's the sun. Throw a sun in here. Well there won't make much difference on this scale. throwing the sun but but it's so small yeah if if you guys have any suggestions or would like me to see me play any of any more of this game let me know um, let me know what things you'd like to see um, and I'll see if they're possible on the game so thanks for watching hope you have a good day